The last bushfire season was unprecedented. 33 people lost their lives, over 3,000 homes were destroyed and more than 12 million hectares were burnt. I'm so pleased that local government New South Wales, with funding from the New South Wales government, is able to assist councils to help their communities prepare for future fire seasons and build resilience to climate change. So we've had the sim table a little over six months. It came about from a grant that we applied for with local government New South Wales. The sim table is based on something called ambient computing. We can put in all our data and then we can simulate over that floods or fires. The sim table is an incredibly simple and user-friendly and intuitive piece of equipment to use. So what you have in front of you is a, uh, a tray filled up with a crushed walnut shell. Above it is a short throw projector connected to a computer. And what that does is that it projects these images onto the crushed walnut shell. The key part to how it works is actually this infrared camera. That camera watches the table and that allows us to manipulate and control the menu of the sim table. For example, with a laser pointer, we can change the wind speed and direction and we can control the speed of the simulation the, the quality of the, of the education and engagement which we are able to achieve with the sim tables is quite remarkable. We split our workshops into either looking at people who are vulnerable to bushfire because of where they live or because of a, a, a sector that they're part of. We run through a simulation from North America, it's called the Camp Fire and it is the most expensive and destructive fire to date. Then we set Karingai up, we sculpt the landscape to be Karingai. We then bring down the satellite image of Karingai, so you get that 3D image. We ask people to put a flag where their house might be. And then we simulate a fire. We talk about the weather conditions leading up to the day. Nine o'clock in the morning on a Tuesday, we want you to think where you would be, what you would be doing. And the day is going to proceed, it's a catastrophic fire day, it's, you've had the warnings. We change the wind direction so that the fire behaviour changes accordingly. Big fires under big winds, they can spot you know, tens of kilometres ahead of the fire front. And in catastrophic conditions like this, no house was, is safe. Generally the first impression they have is one of shock and uh, fear. And then as we walk them through the ClimateWise Communities website, which twins with the sim table, then they see, oh, I can do something about this. We certainly have seen the benefit for, uh, for us in Karingai and for the Karingai Council. We've also actually shown it to a lot of our colleagues in other brigades, uh, and they've seen you know, a significant uh, benefit of having that uh, simulation uh, capability. The most important part was it also gave us an opportunity to engage with the residents. Oh, it's a fascinating way to display the way fires move and make you think about the sorts of uh, situations that you could be put in. Well, I think the sim table is terrific. It, I thought that I was prepared for bushfires. I've lived through them in this environment. But then I went to the modelling and I really learned a lot about the way fire travels, how it can travel, how it can change so quickly. And I guess it also reinforced the idea that um, actually you're on your own. So something like the sim table, uh, allowing people to get their heads around what climate change actually means on the ground and the nature of these events and how it will affect these events is uh, a really important tool for councils to have. The ability of the sim table to attract people to the workshop has been a beautiful outcome of this whole process. We know climate change is causing an increase in the frequency and intensity of fire weather. Councils have such an important role to play in preparing their communities for bushfires. I encourage you to learn more about these tools and how your council might use them to save lives and protect homes. It's really a no-brainer in the obligation that councils have to work with their citizens to uh, allow them to become more resilient.